And now in this dark age of the law, nobody would believe your claim that it's effective. In an era where evidence is fabricated, do you truly expect feelings to be accepted as proof? Well, where exactly is your proof that I fear the moon rock anyway? Well, I admit I don't have any conventional proof, but I still say that examining a person's heart has its merits. Oh really? Then why don't you listen carefully with those special ears of yours? Listen to the voices of the, pe of the hearts of the people in the gallery. All I hear is distrust. As you can see, the people are on my side. Because all they see is a strange little girl using a weird little machine. But it's not like I use analytical psychology to falsely accuse people. Uh oh, he's got Athena doubting herself. Miss Sykes' analytical psychology has breathed new life into the courtroom. It has freed the hearts of many witnesses, and has been the key. That has been key in getting to the truth. What nonsense. Your Honor, the defense's claim is a false one. I don't feel any kind of fear when it comes to the moon rock. Hmm, I see. Very well, I will give the opinion of this court. In a trial, I don't feel that a person's emotions are quite as compelling as actual evidence is. But, Your Honor... There, you see. Nobody believes you in your trumped-up charges. However, I do believe Miss Sykes' analysis can contribute to making the truth clear. I have seen her do this firsthand several times already. Surely you jest. So does this mean... you will accept my findings in this trial, Your Honor? Yes, I believe your claim, Miss Sykes. I think there is merit in examining why the witness feels fear in regards... in regard to the moon rock. That is the court's opinion on this... on this matter. Then that's a win for me. No, a win for analytical psychology. Now, Mr. Phantom, you will tell this court the reason for... for your fear. Ana analytical psychology. My fears? Fine. I'll show you precisely why these abstract things can't, can't be considered evidence. That bloody laugh. Wait, so it's a testimony? Alright, yeah. Cool. Let's do it. My fear of the moon rock. I felt fear when I thought about the moon rock because it reminded me of the phantom. Yes, I'm very afraid of him, afraid of him because he took my family hostage. What reason would the phantom have to be afraid of the moon rock? None at all. So the very fact that I'm afraid of the moon rock means I'm not him. In fact, I'm on the side of... Justice! Oh god. <sighs> and there you have it. Now do you see why I'm afraid of the moon rock? Sure. You sound convincing enough. But so does any 2-bit con artist. It's all meaningless in the absence of ed evidence. Oh! Nice counter. Hmm. Hmm. The phantom is like the mist. No flesh, no bones. My sword alone cannot cut it. Right, Dono? With your deductive reasoning, and the body of evidence before us. Let us send this miserable phantom fellow to the other world together. Hey, teaming up! You and I, Prosecutor Blackwill. We have a duty to bring the Phantom down, and restore the people's faith in the courts. Indeed, by covering for Athena, I allowed the Phantom to escape. And as a prosecutor, I gave birth to the people's mistrust with my... with my murder conviction. I bear part of the responsibility as well. For being suspected of, suspected of forging evidence and losing my attorney's badge as a result. The two of us and the Phantom were there at the beginning of the Dark Age of the Law. 
then it is also our burden to cut away the foul spectre we created, is it not? Until all that remains is the righteousness of the court and the faith of the people. Trust? Understanding? Huh! Fragile, fragile ideals of the masses who are controlled by emotion. Humans can't truly trust each other, which is exactly why... The illusion of trust is so enticing. Once two people overcome their misgivings, that's where real trust is, be is to be found. You're free to believe what you want, but... Trust like that is stronger than you and your lies, always. Cross-examination! My fear of the Moonrock. I felt fear when I thought about the Moonrock because it reminded me of the Phantom. It only reminded you of the Phantom? Don't make me laugh. You are the Phantom. Evidence is everything in, co in a court of law. Did you, or did you forget? I was forced to testify over a silly thing like feelings. But those tactics won't work here from, from here on out. You need real evidence. I hate to admit it, but he's right. It seems pressing is fruitless. It doesn't actually yield anything. Yes, I'm very afraid of him because he took my family hostage. Your family? Like, who in your family specifically? Oh, I don't know. Like, maybe my lover, for example? For example. Maybe. We need a more concrete answer than that. Maybe my mother, my son, or my daughter. Maybe it was all of them. I'm so sad and worried. I miss them so much. He's obviously lying. Look how upset I am. Is it any wonder I followed the Phantom's orders? Jeez. What reason would the Phantom have to be afraid of the Moonrock? None at all. Wrong. Utility knife. It's what Athena used. Detective Fulbright, I assume you know what this is. Of course. That's the knife the Phantom used to kill Clay Terran. That's right. And the exact same type of knife... Miss Sykes used seven years ago when she stabbed the Phantom's hand. Yes, that was discussed earlier, as I recall. Actually, if he's the Phantom, take off the glove. Surely he'd have a scar on his left hand. Wait, no, his right hand. It was his right hand. Actually, now that I think about it, whenever he gets angry and puts his fist up, he actually has like a vein pop up on that glove. I wonder if that's got any significance to the scar. Hmm. Probably not. I'm pro probably just thinking. Too much into it. He dodged at first, so he only got his clothes. But I tried again. And this time you got him, didn't you? I did. I remember it clearly now. The knife went into the back of his hand. Why don't we just ask him to remove his glove? Miss Sykes then stated that she remembers the culprit bleeding. It's my theory that the culprit's blood got on the moon rock. And he was afraid that if the blood was analysed, his true identity would be revealed. That explains why the Phantom had to remove the moon rock from the crime scene. You mean, if we ran the analysis now, we'd know who the Phantom is? Yes, I suppose so. But unfortunately, the moon rock in question is missing. That may be so, but I'm certain I can explain what happened to it in great detail. You can? Of course. Not. You don't actually expect us to believe that, do you? Because you don't fool me. What this court, what this court needs is a bully-free zone. <laughs> ah, the infamous sword of the beguiling bluff. Its edge is without compare. Come now, ready it with me, and show us just how finely it cuts. Your Honor, this is an outrage. Oh, I mean, this is an outrage. Yeah, on his right hand. That pops up every time he gets angry. I highly doubt it's got anything to do with the fact he was stabbed in it. That would be interesting, though. Because it, it's done that since the very, I think since the very beginning we saw him. Oh. Why can't we just ask him to remove the gloves? Go on, right or no. Let's start with something that's been bothering me for a while. Now, the culprit supposedly, supposedly removed the moon rock from the lab. But in this video of him, it's nowhere to be seen. Oh, you're right. 
But here's something to consider. What if the Phantom hid the moon rock somewhere at the scene of the crime? Good thinking, boss. Security was super tight at the Space Center. I think it might have said that day. I, I didn't get to read it. Hang on. Oh, back then. All, all that in spite of the Space Center having very strict security in those days. All personal effects were examined thoroughly, coming or going. You couldn't even smuggle a withered old leaf through those checkpoints. Does this mean that the moon rock is still somewhere in the space center? In the name of justice, I proclaim that's impossible. And why is that? The space center was searched from top to bottom. And especially the lab. But the moon rock was never found. How can I forget about that? A sad but true fact, we still haven't haven't a grasp on how it was done. But the Phantom made the moon rock vanish into the ether. There's no way it just disappeared. Logic and evidence tells us otherwise. The Phantom didn't have the moon rock on him when he left the lab. And yet, a thorough police search didn't turn up anything. And it never turned up in the seven years after that either. The Phantom made the rock disappear without physically removing it himself. Hmm. But how? There must have been a way. Think, Phoenix, think. Oh! The Hope Capsule. How did the moon rock vanish from the robotics lab? The capsule, and then it was sh shot up into space. So can you, or can you not, show what happened to the moon rock, Mr. Wright? Yes, I can, Your Honor. What? Oops, sorry, I mean... What? <laughs> I like how he has to redo his, like, emotions. That was great. In that case, let's have your answer, Mr. Wright. How did the Phantom make the moon rock disappear from the crime scene? Right there. Hope Capsule! It was launched into space for seven years. That's the Hope Capsule, right? The one that went up with the Hat-1 rocket. He couldn't carry the rock out, but he couldn't leave it in the center to be found either. So there was only one safe place to stash it. The Hope Capsule that was there in the lab that day. Hmm, yes. And the team must have loaded it onto the Hope's... on the Hope space probe eventually. But, if that's what happened, then the moon rock would have been launched up into space along with the rocket. That's exactly what did happen. <laughs> Preposterous. It would mean... that for these past seven years, the moon rock was... Exactly. The Phantom got rid of the moon rock in the most cosmic way he knew how. It was out there in the depths of space. I bought the Hope Space Probe. Wh 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 what? Hell yeah! Uh, order! Order in the cart! I understand now. The Phantom's original scheme was to sabotage the Hat One anyway. The villain. He used his primary objective to conveniently kill two birds with one stone. That's right. He planned for the moon rock to be turned into cosmic dust out in space. Thereby destroying the one piece of evidence that would reveal his true identity. But Mr. Starbuck and the others foiled the Phantom's plot. The Hope Space Probe sailed off safely on its mission and returned seven years later. With a capsule in tow. If we analyze the blood on the moon rock, it should make one thing crystal clear. That you were the Phantom all along, Detective Fulbright. So he killed Clay just so he could get the moon rock back. I believe so. His original assignment may have been just to sabotage the hat too, but... At the same time, he also had to retrieve the evidence of his crimes seven years ago. That's why he went to the boarding lounge. 
and attacked Clay as he made his escape out of the rocket with the capsule. But in the end, it was all he could do to just escape himself, just to escape himself. So he didn't get the capsule. Oh, Clay must have fuck. I clicked by accident. Clay must have done everything he could to stop Fulbright. He probably hung onto that capsule for all it was worth, or for all he was worth until his very last breath. This is so funny. You make me laugh. You really do. Boy, he's totally out of whack now. It's game over. Game over for you, Detective Fulbright. Why don't you just admit admit to it all now? There's nothing to admit. I'm Bobby Fulbright, undercover investigator. I tell you, I'm not the Phantom. The blood on the rock is just another one of his schemes, a trap. Hmm. Now I'm not sure what to think. I suppose if the Phantom is a spy worth his salt, a trap is not out of the question. But in that case, you could say anything is a trap. That's what makes a trap a trap. I've been framed into taking the blame for the Phantom. Your Honor, I believe further investigation is in order. Silence. Further investigation? More like plotting your escape. But no more. I will bring you to justice myself, if I must. Here and now. I guess it's time to show you. Just what I'm really capable of. Die, Simon Blackwell. What? Hey, you guys aren't really... Now what's happening? <laughs> Jesus! This case is all over the place. Hmm! It's Edgeworth. Looks like I made it just in time. Edgeworth. I have good news for you, Mr. Wright. I've uncovered some very crucial facts. Did you find something out about the Phantom's true identity? You might say that. I started by looking into the first people on the scene seven years ago. All three, an employee, two office workers, were registered in the robotics uh, in the robot's recognition systems. But none of them looked the least bit like Detective Fulbright. That's not good. But there's more. I've yet to share my most important finding. Mr. Wright, Prosecutor Blackwell, you'd best brace yourselves. Uh-oh. We're racing for impact. The man you see there before you, Bobby Fulbright, is already long dead. What? Huh? What's that supposed to mean? The non-identified body was found a year ago. It has now been proven to possess Bobby Fulbright's, Fulbright's fingerprints. Then does this mean... Wait, his body was found a year ago. Oh, from a year ago. I don't remember what it said. So the Phantom has been literally through the entire game. Wow. Yeah, the Bobby Fulbright we know, we don't know the Bobby Fulbright. Yes, that man there is an imposter pretending to be Bobby Fulbright. An imposter? Then this man... Who in the world is he? Enough of your trickery. If you, not, if you will not reveal yourself to us, then I shall do it for you. Oh god! Ew. Oh god, that's weird. A black, a black hole under the skin. His fa face, face, fucking hiccups. Ah. What the? No. Ah. Look what you did to my mask. Wow. So is he like capable of perfectly not replicating, impersonating a person? If that's the case, then we never really got to know Bobby. We got to know what he was like as a person, but we never actually got to see his actual character. I liked Bobby Fulbright too. And he was dead <laughs> all along. Mask, what is the meaning of this witness? Okay, you got me. I guess I have to show you who I really am now. Right, zooming in on that hole. Wait. What? <laughs> Mr. Starbuck. 
Wait, but that's... Hey, Apollo! Yep, it's me, Solomon Starbuck. Mr. Starbuck, but that can't be right. You can't really be the Phantom, can you? Silence. Of course not. The real Starbuck was aboard the Hat 1, which was set to be destroyed. Wow, he is... he's very good at impersonating someone. Yeah, this is just another mask. I mean, didn't I tell you? I'm an undercover investigator. I can change identities at will. I can... I can be anyone I want. Ah. Not so fast. I have the Phantom Psych Profile right here. If we compile a Psych Profile on you and compare the results, it will prove that you're the Phantom. It's time for me to show you the real meaning of the phrase, the end justifies the means. Aristotle? Really? Was it Aristotle? Yeah, Aristotle means. Now that voice, those words. Why is he uh, impersonating him? Oh god. I cannot accept such ev such evidence here, Miss Sykes. Professor Means. Mask? I'll take what I want by any means necessary. Now, give me that evidence. God, it looks so weird on Bobby Fulbright's like character model. <laughs> with Aristotle's face. Or head. Hmm. Time to take out the trash. Permanently. How could you? Now do you see how powerful the end justify the means can be? How pathetic. You can't even speak without wearing another man's face. Ah, but that's the life of, a, of an undercover agent for you. My real face has no meaning or value to me, at all. Or perhaps it, it is really the case that... You don't even know who you are anymore. Hmm. What must you see when you look in a mirror, Mr. Phantom? Not an awful lot, I'd wager. Well, aren't you just the master of psychology, Blackwell? That's right. I don't know who I am. I am always living as someone else for my assignments. I don't remember what my face looks like. Or even what my personality was like. My face, memories, personality, beliefs, emotions, and soul. I left them all behind. I have no... self. I am no one. I am nothing but an endless abyss. What? What's with this guy? Is he even still human? And now we resume with your lesson, Professor Wright. Oh, uh, huh? I believe you made the, uh, this argument earlier. If you were to analyze the blood on the moon rock, you could prove that I am the Phantom. I believe there was blood on the moon rock in that capsule. Now that we know you aren't even Bobby Fulbright. Your claims of the Phantom Trap won't work anymore. Then why don't you bring this moon rock in? This decisive evidence from the Hope Capsule? I think I will do just that. Get ready, because the Hope Capsule is about to seal your... For... For... Oh, pff, <laughs> that, that looked awfully close to... Fuck! Fudge. It was the courtroom bombing from the other day. It destroyed it. There's still pieces of... The, the bomb, though, isn't there? Oh, not the bomb. From what they gathered, they laid it all out. The capsule was there in the courtroom as evidence and was blown to smithereens. There's a chance. <laughs> Maybe. Looks like you have finally caught on. Full mark for the defense for effort. But what a shame your hope was lost in that courtroom explosion. Hmm. So that's the real reason this courtroom was blown up. It was all for the Phantom to destroy that one piece of evidence. I can't believe it. Have we really reached a dead end after coming all this way? Has the only evidence we have on this guy really been destroyed? How dare you continue to call me the Phantom? As I've said all along, I'm just a nameless undercover agent. Objection! And the defense will continue to assert that you are the Phantom. 
Furthermore, we have proof. Or at least, a prayer. I'm afraid that won't do, Mr. Wright. At least put some weight behind your swing, right, Dono? I, I know, I'm trying. There's only one thing that can unmask this menace, the moon rock. But that was blown to bits in the courtroom bombing. And yet, is it really gone without a trace? What if some tiny, some tiny part, some little fragment still exists? Yes. And you can see the stolen moon rock there too. That strange black and yellow thing on the left side of the picture. Okay, they're, they're pointing out what it looks like. Black and yellow. Very well. Mr. Wright, let's see your proof. What evidence will finally prove the Phantom's identity? Uh... This? Hmm? Isn't that the bomb that blew up in the courtroom? Not blew up the courtroom? And the moon rock along with it? Are you saying this will reveal the Phantom's identity? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm... Focus your attention on this photo taken after the bombing, specifically right here. Well, we have a black and yellow thing... I really hate that I can't move the hand. There we go. We have a black and yellow thing here, but we also have a black and yellow thing here. Which one is it? <laughs> it's obviously this. Take a look at this. Please, take a look at this newspaper article. This ar article about the hat one. Is that the Phantom, then? The person that's down in front of it? Or is that just an employee? Now please note the strange black and yellow rock. They're on the left. That's the moon rock. And when we look at this photo of the bomb of the bomb fragments... 7k. See how there is a, a rock-like object with the same coloration? Oh my, yes, I see it. It would seem that the moon rock was much more durable than the Phantom thought. If we take a look at all the fragments that the police found, we'll likely find one with blood. And DNA testing on that blood will prove that the witness is indeed the Phantom. Unbelievable. But that's impossible. Hmm. A surprise to be sure. But a welcome one. That's one bloody tough rock. Let us have the fragments tested straight away. Oh, and you'll be having a DNA test too. Full bright. Bailiff, contact the police department immediately and order a testing. Order the testing. Ugh, pardon me. Prosecutor Blackwell, what did the test results show? There was a rock fragment that had blood on it that appeared several to be several years old. DNA testing revealed... Well, I'm sure you know full well what it revealed. Hmm. They confirmed it was the witness's blood, didn't, didn't they? There's no use in trying to talk your way out of it anymore. Admit it, you are the Phantom. Wait, what? Huh? Mr. Wright, did you just raise an objection to yourself? No, I didn't say a word. That was my objection, Apollo. Wait, has he got a phoenix mask? Oh god, this is getting a little bit ridiculous. Why? It was a pretty good objection, too. Don't you think? What the fuck? How many people is he going to impersonate? Now, now he's me. So, uh, did you have an objection or not, Mr. Wright? Huh? Oh, uh, no, not really, Your Honor. No, not you, Mr. Wright. I mean, the witness, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Could this trial get any more insane? I like, <laughs> I like how his name is Phoenix, question mark. Mr. Wright, this fragment of rock in the photograph, and those just like it. How can you be sure they're pieces of the moon rock? Of the same moon rock that was at the robotics lab. Care to explain what you mean? Well, there may have been a rock or two in the courtroom that had my blood on it. But how do you know they're not just rocks? You can't prove that they're THE moon rock, right? Actually? We can. 
Don't be absurd. It was a very random object that we got added to our court record. And stuff that gets added to the court record always has a use. Just compare the fragment with the rock in the newspaper article. Anybody can see they're the same. They have the exact same coloration. But maybe some of the rock with the same coloration happened to be in the courtroom. It's highly unlikely a rock with such a unique appearance just happened to be there. But you can't deny it's a possibility. But your blood was found on one of the fragments. Apollo, there's no, nothing suspicious about my blood being on a piece of rock. And why not? I know it sounds like an excuse, but... Several years ago, I tripped and fell in this very courtroom. And was hurt pretty badly. Maybe that's how my blood found its way onto a piece of rubble. Even he must realise how ridiculous that sounds. And yet, I suppose it's not completely out of the out of the question. I see you're starting to sweat, Mr. Wright. I thought 